Hi everyone, welcome back to Understand the Bible. In this session we will be looking at Lord's Day 16 from the Heidelberg Catechism and we'll be thinking about Jesus' death and we'll be thinking about why Jesus had to die. You know, we've got to that point in the Apostles' Creed, we've seen about how Jesus was crucified and it says he died and was buried. Now what does that mean and what difference does it make to our faith? What, why do we need to believe these things? That's what we're going to be looking at. And we've got five questions today. They're all fairly short and I've only got four Bible references to look at. So we're going to go through them quite quickly. Um, so with that in mind, let's kick off with question number 40. Why did Christ have to go all the way to death? Because God's justice and truth demand it. Only the death of God's son could pay for our sin. So to answer this question, they go back to, to God's justice and truth. His justice and truth demanded it. Let's just look at one Bible verse from Genesis chapter 2. And I think we've already looked at this one, but it's a, like I said, the early chapters of Genesis are foundational for uh, the Christian faith. Genesis chapter 2 verse 17. But you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, for when you eat, a, eat from it, you will certainly die. So God tells Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden that when they eat from the fruit of the tree which is forbidden, then they would surely die. Now, from the moment that Adam and Eve sinned, death entered the world. That was the punishment for sin. That was the, the kind of punishment which God uh, gave them. And that's the punishment, as we've kind of seen, which has um, spread through the whole human race as a result of their sin. Now, in order, it says, for, for God's son, for Jesus to pay for our sin, he had to take that punishment. So it's, it was fitting that Jesus needed to die because it's the punishment for sin. So Jesus couldn't be, be punished in some other way. He needed to pay for sin. And the punishment for sin, the wages of sin, is death. So Jesus needed to die in order to pay for our sin. Question number 41 why was he buried? His burial testifies that he really died. And I'm going to just read uh, one, uh, a couple of Bible verses from 1 Corinthians, um, just a very short passage, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, which is probably the biggest passage in the New Testament, which talks about the resurrection. So if you want to learn about the resurrection, that would be a good place uh, to start. But 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 3 and 4. For what I received, I passed on to you as of first importance, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures. Uh, and then it, it continues. So it was really important to say that Jesus Christ was um, he, he, he did actually die and he was buried and that's what the Apostle Paul says that Jesus Christ he died and was buried there are some um, some people particularly I think this view is common in the Muslim world that Jesus Christ didn't really die on the cross that he just kind of fainted and then you know he was revived and he just went off to live somewhere um, quietly now um, I don't think that view is really historically uh, viable, given what we know about crucifixion, given what we know about you know, the rest of the Gospels, how the God, there was a guard put on the tomb and so on. Um, but I won't really go into that. Um, if you want to know, then there's a famous book called Who Moved the Stone? And that's a book which kind of looks at the evidence for the resurrection. Um, and there's also a, a more recent book called The Case for Christ. And, um, and they all kind of um, are people who've looked into the evidence for the resurrection and said, actually, I think it's, it happened because of the, the evidence. But though that's kind of by the by. What the point that the, the creed is wanting to say is that Jesus really did die. And it's important for us to believe that. You know, he, buried, he was buried and dead. You know, he really did die. Question number 42. Since Christ has died for us, why do we still have to die? Our death does not pay the debt for our sins. Rather, it puts an end to our sinning and is our entrance into eternal life. And I'm going to read out a lovely Bible verse now, which is one of my favourites, I think, from, uh, from the Bible. And um, 
In fact, actually, it's, it's from the book of Philippians, which is one of the letters of, of Paul. Another letter of Paul, he wrote a lot, a lot of letters in the New Testament. He wrote most of the letters in the New Testament, in fact. And um, yeah, in our church, we've been studying Philippians uh, recently. And this verse has really stuck, uh, stuck out uh, to me. And I hope it really uh, sticks out to you as well, because it's, it's really worth remembering this one. Um, and it's only, only short. Philippians 1, 21. For me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. To live is Christ and to die is gain. That was like Paul's um, motto for life. You know, to live is Christ and to die is gain. And you just think how wonderful it is that Paul could say to die is gain. Because, you know, I think for many people, death is an enemy. And, and we know that death is a horrible thing. You know, it, Paul does say elsewhere that death is an enemy. But it's something which is to be avoided at all costs. And it's something which is, um, you know, just the, the worst thing in, in the world. It, you, know, if it, you know, we just try and bury it. And I think particularly Western society today, we just try and ignore death. But Paul says, no, no, no. To live is Christ, so I can dedicate my life to Christ in the here and now because I know that to die is gain, that dying is going to be with him, is eternal life, is putting an end to all of my sin. That's the wonderful good news. So our death, it doesn't pay the debt for sin, but it, it, it's our entrance, if you like, it's our gateway into that eternal life. That's the, the lovely thing about it. Question number 43. What further advantage do we receive from Christ's sacrifice and death on the cross? Through Christ's death, our old selves are crucified, put to death and buried with him, so that the evil desires of the flesh may no longer rule over us, but that instead we may dedicate ourselves as an offering of gratitude to him. Now I'm just going to read you one Bible verse, or one uh, short passage from the Bible, just to help us uh, think about what they're, they're talking about in this Q&A. Romans chapter 6 verses 5 to 14. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly also be united with him in a resurrection like his. For we know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body ruled by sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin, because anyone who has died has been set free from sin. Now, if we died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. For we know that since Christ was raised from the dead, he cannot die again. Death no longer has mastery over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all, but the life he lives, he lives to God. I'll leave it there for the, the moment. But this is a, a passage where there's a, a lot going on. It's a, in some ways, it's a, a complicated passage. But in other ways, I think the point that, that Paul is making is quite straightforward, which is that when we come to Christ, we are united with him and we're united with him in his death and in his resurrection. So when we're united to Christ, our old selves are there on the cross. You know, that our old, it's as if our old selves are being crucified with him on the cross. And then it's as if our new selves kind of come alive. You know, the sin, uh, the self which we will, we will one day be, you know, that we will one day be perfect and sinless and, you know, all of the good things that God wants us to be one day. That starts to come alive when we're united with Christ in his resurrection. So, uh, so when we believe, we are united to Christ in death and also united to him in resurrection. Those two things are, are true and wonderfully true. So that's the advantage that we receive from Christ's sacrifice and death on the cross so that sin doesn't reign over us anymore uh, but that actually we we have the freedom now to offer our lives as an offering of gratitude to him you know we still do sin while we're in uh, this um, th this body at the moment you know we still do sin but there are uh, we're looking forward to the day when everything will be complete and I think we'll think more about that as, as time goes on through the course about uh, that that tension between sinning now but one day being uh, being complete so hold, hold that thought as well and so the final question for for this session is question 44 uh, we won't spend too much time on this why does the creed add he descended to hell 
to assure me in times of personal crisis and temptation that Christ my Lord, by suffering unspeakable anguish, pain and terror of soul, especially on the cross but also earlier, has delivered me from the anguish and torment of hell. So uh, the creed does say that he descended to, to hell or he descended to the dead. Now there's a little bit of controversy as to whether Christ descended to hell in the, the sense that uh, ultimately those who do not believe in Jesus will be in hell. You know, I think a lot of people think that Jesus didn't actually um, descend to hell in, in that sense of it. But what they, they do in the Heidelberg is they, they take this in a spiritual way. And they say that what Jesus endured on the cross was, uh, was delivering us from hell. And he suffered unspeakable anguish and pain and, and terror. And you know, sometimes, sometimes we use the phrase of someone, you know, oh, they went through hell. Well, you know, in Jesus's case, that's what they're, like they're saying. You know, he went through hell in order to free us. And so when we say that Jesus uh, descended to hell, what, we, what, what um, they are saying, and I think that this is a good way of, of understanding it, is that actually Jesus kind of spiritually under, underwent hell for us, to free us from that pain and to free us from that, from the anguish and torment, as they say. So it's just good to remember that what Christ Jesus underwent, he did for us and he did to free us and to save us uh, from that. And I think that's a particular, a good way to finish this actually, is it's to say, it's to assure us, particularly in times of crisis and temptation, that whatever we may be going through, that Jesus has been through more and he's, done it in order that in eternity we might enjoy something far greater uh, and more joyous that it will just make our lives now kind of look like you know um, nothing by comparison all of the struggles and the temptations and the pain that we're going through now will be as nothing compared to the good things that are coming uh, for those who believe and trust in Jesus so I just like to, to leave it there really. Um, I hope that this has been helpful to you in understanding more about why Jesus died. Uh, let's take a moment to pray now and ask God to help us to understand this better uh, uh, every day. So dear Heavenly Father, we do thank you for these wonderful truths and we pray that you would write them on our hearts. Help us to, to know more of why Jesus died and help us to experience more of that being united with him in his death and being united with him in new life. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thanks very much for joining me, everyone, at Law Say 16. Uh, on to the next one uh, next time, whenever that may be. I hope to see you again very soon. But until then, God bless. <laughs>